Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Connor. I'm the uh, commander of the Major K Squad. And we're here to talk about a case that was activated on Thursday afternoon. Uh, uh, different people are going to be speaking, and all I want to talk about is the Major K Squad. To let you know, this case is what the Major K Squad was designed for. They experienced a, a heinous crime on Thursday afternoon, and with a smaller department, they don't have the resources to investigate that thoroughly, so Chief Carpenter reached out to me about activating the Major case squad and he could even talk about how quick this came together. Uh, but also it, it's in hand in hand with the Cross Rivers Crimes Task Force that, that Mr. Hain established and being the commander of that also, it has some similar investigative tools that we can use in that towards this, this crime because as you'll see is this is residents from Missouri that ended up in this location and a crime was committed. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about the details. I'll leave that up to Lieutenant Bauer for the Mass County Sheriff's Office. But right now, I'm going to I want to introduce to you as Chief Carpenter of the Maryville Police Department. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rob Carpenter. I'm the Chief of Police here at Maryville. Uh, as uh, Major Connor stated last Thursday, um, we got called to the scene of a, uh, a deceased subject. We immediately established the fact that it was a homicide. Um, due to Maryville having limited resources, uh, we only have one detective in Maryville. Uh, we uh, immediately activated the major K squad, requested their assistance. And I can tell you within 30 minutes, um, investigators from all over the area started to arrive. Um, so I, I, I can't thank you know, the major case squad enough uh, for solving this uh, situation. I'd like to also say uh, this particular situation uh, really had not much to do with Maryville. The, the, both the victim and the suspect were just passing through and just happened to pull over in our city limits and uh, commit a heinous crime. So, uh, with that being said, I want to introduce uh, Lieutenant uh, Brian Bauer of the uh, Major Case Squad. Good afternoon. My name is Brian Bauer, Deputy Commander, Major Task Force, St. Louis area, activated for this particular case. I'd like to express my condolences to the family and friends uh, directly affected for this, uh, uh, this act. Out of respect for the family, family involved, and their privacy, I will not be discussing evidence, motive, or any particulars on the crime scene. Secondly, I would like to express and commend the tireless efforts of numerous agencies involved in this uh, investigation. Those include Maryville, Collinsville Police Department, Glen Carbon Police Department, Ileas uh, Search and Rescue Teams. Um, St. Louis County Police Department, Normandy Police Department, and of course the major case investigators that responded. All were instrumental in this case, and without their dedication, um, the following uh, charges would not have been made. On Thursday, March 17th, at around 4.05 p.m., the Maryville Police Department received a 911 call of a deceased subject in the 2000 block of North Bluff Road, Collinsville, Illinois. The caller advised that there was a male subject face down in a pool of blood what appeared to be in multiple gunshot wounds. At the request of the Maryville Police Department, the major task force was activated, resulting in over 20 plus investigators to respond. The individual victim is identified as Ronald L. Holland, H-O-L-L-A-N-D, male, age 40, Jennings, Missouri. Investigators made significant progress in the early stages of the investigation and a person of interest was established. Additionally, a vehicle commonly used by Mr. Holland was unaccounted for but was later located abandoned in St. Louis. Following up numerous leads, the investigators were able to tie the Illinois scene to the Missouri scene where the vehicle was recovered. Uh, investigators were able to develop and gather information which led to the charges associated with this investigation. On March 19th, 
the Madison County State's Attorney's Office issued charges related to first degree murder to the individual identified as Dalen, D-A-N-Y-I-E-L, M. Johnson, male, age 40, St. Louis. Johnson and Holland knew each other very well, but there is no criminal history that shows between the two. Investigation revealed that Johnson acted alone, fled the scene, where investigators later located the vehicle. Mr. Johnson was taken into custody early Sunday morning by the Normandy Police Department and is currently being held at the St. Louis County Detention Center. I want to stress that we have been able to establish any direct connection from Illinois, Collinsville, or Maryville areas to this particular incident. It shows that Johnson and Holland have mostly established their residency in the St. Louis and outlying suburbs. This has been a thorough investigation with over 60 leads and numerous search warrants. Investigators are continuing to clear and pursue leads. The public, if they have any additional information, is requested to contact the Major Case Squad of Greater St. Louis or the Maryville Police Department. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Tom Hain, State's Attorney, Madison County. Thank you, Lieutenant Bauer. Um, and again, our, our prayers are with the victims' families here. Um, I'm sure they are uh, having a, a terrible time, and uh, we continue to pray for them. Um, and we will work hard to ensure that justice is done in this case. So this morning, uh, we charged Danielle M. Johnson of St. Louis with four felony counts in relation to last Thursday's shooting death of Ronald L. Holland of Jennings. Count one and two are first degree murder charges on alternative theories. Count three is the use of a stolen firearm in the commission of an offense. And count four is the unlawful possession of a weapon by a felon charge. Now these charge to that, charges together contain the possibility of life in prison uh, for the defendant. The murder charge alone is typically 20 to 60 years in prison, but with the firearm enhancement, uh, which we believe would apply in this case, it is 45 years to life. Uh, count three and count four are three to seven years or three to 14 years, respectively. Of note, defendant uh, Johnson has a somewhat lengthy criminal history in Missouri, um, and he was the last, the last released from Missouri Department of Corrections on uh, December of 2020 for a weapons charge. Just to reiterate what Lieutenant Bauer described, uh, the residents of Maryville, Collinsville, and Madison County should know that we believe the location of this crime in Madison County is purely accidental. Uh, the victim and the defendant traveled from St. Louis to Madison County together just prior to the commission of this offense. Uh, they've known each other for many years, um, and so the location of this being in Maryville, as uh, Chief Carpenter said, uh, is we believe purely accidental. There's no connection to this area. Uh, but is, it is a testament to our local law enforcement community. Um, we have stellar police and investigative resources in Madison County. The Major Case Squad is uh, top notch, true professionals. And uh, together, you know, the coordinating agencies working on this crime are an impressive list. All together, as, as Major Carpenter was, or as uh, uh, Chief Carpenter was discussing. You know, the Major Case Squad worked with Maryville PD, Glen Carbon PD, Collinsville PD, Illinois State Police, St. Louis County PD, Normandy PD, and the Madison County Coroner's Office and the Madison County Sheriff's Office, along with the Metro East Crime Lab and ILEAS. Uh, this is a testament to you know, cross-river coordination among police uh, units. Uh, a crime that occurred here with Missouri residents is then uh, the individual is arrested over in Missouri within days. So it's a testament to the great police work we have that allows these kinds of heinous crimes to be solved and to be uh, prosecuted quickly, which helps victims' families and helps the community uh, move on. Um, so I just want to thank the individuals behind me. Uh, they are the best of the best. Uh, what they do every day, you know, lets us sleep well at night uh, and protects us all, and then allows my office to pursue justice in the court of law along uh, on behalf of, of the victims of this crime. 
Uh, so I just want to thank everyone for all their hard work on this case. With that we can answer any questions. Can you tell us, Kelly Hoskins Fox too, can you tell us a little bit more about the motive and then also uh, more hard work about the detectives here with the Major Case Squad and how they came together? It's so important to have an organization like this. Well, I'll say a few words, but I would love to hear from all the Major Case Squad individuals as well, Tim Bauer and, uh, and uh, uh, Commander Connor. Uh, but in this case, we can't comment about motive. We're, we're here to present charges and we can tell you just enough uh, that's necessary to put the public's mind at ease that this had no connection to Maryville. This wasn't uh, aimed at Maryville. But we can't discuss motive. That's best saved for the resolution at, at the trial phase or upon conviction. Uh, so I would, I, would, uh, I would leave you to that stage of the affair for that discussion. Um, but in terms of working together, look behind me. These are incredible individuals. Uh, they are hard workers. They take their job very seriously because they know they're serving the community well. They put their lives on the line, as we see every day across the country. So many, you know, uh, tragic situations involving police. Well, here we have great police, and they do their job professionally. They do it well, and they solve these crimes so that we can bring justice to victims. So, you know, the major case squad and all the coordinating agencies, along with the Cross River Crime the Task Force, are dedicated to making sure we do justice for victims and we solve crimes quickly so that we can prosecute them in the court of law. And I think uh, that mission of service is something that, that the individuals behind me represent very well. Uh, but I'd also turn it over to Major Connor and uh, to Lieutenant Bauer. Well, Kelly, I met with you a couple years ago when I was appointed commander. We talked about how this works. To give you an idea of the logistics, Chief Carpenter gave me a call Thursday evening and within, as he mentioned, within 30, 45 minutes, these investigators who are ready to sell, celebrate St. Pat, Patrick's Day put down their, their forks and put on their suits and headed to Maryville. And in about two hours after that initial phone call, everyone you see here was ready to go. And they were handed out leads and under Lieutenant Bowers' direction. And it just, the investigation took over. They worked all night. And they get home maybe around 4 or 5 in the morning, get a few hours of sleep, come back at 8 or 9 the next day, and they do that for 16 hours again. And they keep doing that. Uh, the way that the major case squad is, is, is put together is for five days, they can do that every day. And they do nothing but look towards evidence that can help solve this problem. Can you describe the property of where the victim was found a little bit more? Uh, the best thing I could say, it's 2,000 block of North Bluff Road. There's not a lot out there. It's a lot of, it's a, kind of a farm community. There's really not a lot there. Are you able to say anything about maybe how, did you all find out how long you've been laying there? I can't get into that. Are you able to say how many times you've been shot or is that a crime scene? That would be a crime scene detail, yes. Did you work out with a murder weapon? Yes, we did. Detail what that weapon was? No, I cannot. Yeah, you, can, uh, you can have access to the charging documents as well. Uh, they're all public records. But, you know, the, the firearm, the stolen firearm, the uh, was the Glock Model 2340 caliber semi automatic handgun. And uh, I think it's, it is appropriate to say that the victim was not there long.
we want to make sure our focus remains on the defendant here and the defendant's actions and what we believe the evidence will show at trial. And, uh, and we wish uh, to or the family to know that they're in our prayers and, and we hope that the news will also respect that privacy that the family think is due. Thank you, everybody.